welcome back to my film and TV channel. And it's, well, it's middle of November, I'm, I'm at work, we're playing Christmas songs all day long, so I'm already a bit fed up of it, or a bit fed up of it. And I've watched uh, two or three Christmas films so far, uh, when I've been looking at this, and a couple I've not even bothered uh, putting a review out on, because they're just... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it was they were the lifestyle sort of films, and that's just a bit bland and the same to me. It's not worth putting a review out there. But this is the first one that uh, may have may have appeared at cinemas last year. I'm not too sure this, um, but of course, it's now available this year. Uh, I'm not too sure on the schedule for it. So my apologies. You can probably find out yourselves. But I'm going to look at uh, a, an R rating, an 18 certificate. So it is a Christmas. Uh, a dark Christmas film, uh, a bit of a comedy, dark, dark comedy film, uh, of which uh, there's been some classics over the years. Is this a classic? Sadly not, but it might be worth a little watch anyway. I'm going to have a look at something, well, it's entitled It's a Wonderful Knife. There you go. See what they did there? Very clever. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. This is Shudder, of course, so there you go. Shudder Originals, they call them, I'm not too sure. A bit of a mixed bag, don't we? So please press those buttons. Leave us your comments on this film or anything to do with film and TV or your comments on Christmas songs in the middle of November. Whatever, whatever it is, it's great. But uh, please, you know, when, you have, when you're working with it day in, day out for six weeks on, on the trot, Christmas songs, it does push it a little bit and you you want to get a knife out yourself and perhaps start slashing things. But hey, that's, that's, a, that's, that's my psychological problem, nobody else's. So please, give us a thumbs up, guys, if you like this review. If you uh, can do that for me, it'd be much appreciated. And stay tuned for more stuff. Hopefully, I'll, I'll probably do another two or three Christmas films before before Christmas and get them out before Christmas. So it's a wonderful night. Eighty-seven minutes, ideally, ideally, ideal time for this sort of film. Although I will question that in a little bit. A Christmas dark comedy slasher film written by Michael Kennedy, directed by Tyler McIntyre, starring Jane. Yeah, good cast. I like the cast, although they're, they're all a bit ill-fitting. Again, I'll talk about that. Jane Widdop uh, does a. Uh, Probably the best of the lot. Joel McHale, Catherine Isabel and Justin Long star in this. And it's about old Winnie Carruthers or young Winnie Carruthers who saved a town, the idyllic Angel Falls. Even, even the names, you know, close to what we in the original that it's based on. Well, it's not based on, but it takes the mick off. Uh, from a psychotic killer. So she, Wendy Car Winnie Carruthers saves the town. Uh, Wendy must have a brother, uh, a sister. Winnie Carruthers saves the town. The idyllic angel falls from a psychotic killer on Christmas Eve one year previously, but after wishing she'd never been born, stupid girl, she finds herself in an alternate universe in which she doesn't exist. No, it's not an alternate, it's the same one, just a different timeline, you know, you know what these timelines are like. Allowing the killer to slaughter once more, so she made a bit of an error there, didn't she? The film was released on or around the 10th of November, I think on streaming, as I said, I'll just confirm that guys, have a check on your systems, etc. So the scores, yes, Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, they're not outstanding, 55%, that's 60 critics, so quite a few, are rating a 5.7 out of 10. 33 were fresh and 27 rotten, so almost a straight down the middle split. The consensus, it's a wonderful knife, takes an enthusiastic stab at holiday-themed horror comedy, even if it doesn't quite cut as deep as it should. Point. Metacritic, they use uh, they have an average of 52 out of 100. That's based on just 11 critics, so, so not a, a wide range. Three were positive, five were mixed, and three were negative, straight down the middle. But the users are like it a little bit more on Rotten Tomatoes. They give it a 3.6 out of 5, a 72% positivity, so that's okay. Although Internet Movie Database are not overly convinced. They're giving it a sort of 5.6 out of 10, and that's based on 720 scores and reviews. As I said, I've done recording this on the 23rd of November 2023. So that'll bring me, because that's it, that'll bring me to my little thoughts on this. It's not the worst Christmas-themed dark comedy slasher film I've seen. It's a long way from the best, but it, it could have been better. That's, that's what I hate about this. I mean, I was enthralled by the title, I was enthralled by the storyline. I thought, hey, they've got a chance to do a cracking little uh, rip-off here from the classic uh, but I thought they could have done it on a larger scale, unfortunately. But it just feels a little limited. Perhaps it's limited by its budget. I'm not too sure. I think it's probably spent a few quid on it. A bit more thought in the script. And this could have been one of the better uh, dark Christmas comedies to go up there with, you know, with sort of like Black Christmas and uh, Bad Santa, stuff like this. It's been one of the better ones. Uh, but sadly, it's uh, once watched, pretty soon forgotten. 
I wanted more Perhaps It's a Wonderful Life than Scream, uh, more story than running around escaping a, a mass killer or killers, we'll not give anything away. The, they're a genuinely clever little twist, but they're overshadowed, I think, by a monotony of the slasher scenes that just become far too repetitive in this and not interesting enough. The characters, as I mentioned before, didn't an odd mix. The lead is okay, but the others, uh, whether good or bad or all things in between, are just not that interesting to, to watch or even want to survive when it comes to who the, who the killer's killing. Uh, the chemistry overall is just generally poor within families, within friends. It doesn't really work that much for me. It just doesn't doesn't add to the film in any way whatsoever. A lot of promise with a storyline that's not really fulfilled. I was hoping for Happy Death Day uh, with a James Stewart twist and a Capra twist, but uh, it never quite got there, unfortunately, or got anywhere near it. 87 minutes, it was an okay runtime, but I wanted I wanted more backstory. I wanted a little bit more out of the characters. I wanted a, a bit more depth, so I would have probably coped with a little bit longer, but fortunately, as it turned out, 87 minutes, it was, it was over... Thankfully, um, as quick as it possibly could be within a reasonable length of time because it did drag at times within 87 minutes, which is it's a shame. The writer Kennedy did okay with this. Uh, he wrote, did something called Freaky that I reviewed two or three years ago. I gave that six out of ten. This probably isn't an improvement on that, but that, that had been a, a reasonable effort at the time, Freaky. And you can sort of think back to what that was based on as well, entitled Freaky. As a straight-to-streaming effort, it's passable. But for me, just a missed opportunity. I think it could have been so much better. A little bit more thought taken. Perhaps he rushed it out. I'm not too sure. Perhaps a, perhaps a deadline for Christmas was coming and he had to get something out. But uh, uh, an opportunity lost for me. So my scores, I, if it was Rotten Tomatoes, I would be fresh on it. Because it's not not rotten, rotten. Uh, I'd have to be just about fresh. And I've only got two options, haven't I? If it was uh, Metacritic, I'd give it mixed. I wouldn't be negative. I'd give it a mixed score. And I'm going to give it my... Uh, I'll say my watchable score six, as you know, if you watch my things. I'm going to give this a 5.5 out of 10. Uh, probably almost a 5 out of 10 because they're a bit disappointed, but I'll give it a 5.5 out of 10 because it, as, a, as an afternoon watch with nothing else to do, it, it's, ah, it was okay. And as I say, 87 minutes, although it got a bit stodgy at times, it sort of goes by reasonably quickly. So I'll give it a 5.5 out of 10 and dig out some of me, a couple of the other cracking Christmas uh, dark comedies that there are knocking about and give them a wash. Even something like Jack Frost as well. Even even that, if I think back to me, video shop days in the 90s and 2000s, the old Jack Frost, the horror, not not the one with the Keaton in it, uh, the Jack Frost horror, uh, stuff like that. I mean, probably of a, a similar level, perhaps a little bit better than this. It's just, just a wasted opportunity, as I said. It, a good potential story, a good potential story with the with the link into It's a Wonderful Life. And of course, uh, mix that and scream together. You and oh, happy, happy, uh, happy death day. Yeah, that, that springs to mind as well. I did like uh, a bit of happy death day stroke. It's a Wonderful Life. We could have had a cracking little film, unfortunately, sadly. It's just, all right. Thanks for watching guys, until we meet again, that's one thing, don't have please, stay safe everyone, bye for now.